Methodist Hospital after a team of surgeons worked together to save a man's life. The doctors describe it as one of the most complicated cases of their careers. Now the man is waiting for reconstructive surgery after they removed his massive brain tumor. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Chris Dehart was doing what a lot of us were doing, trying to enjoy life, cherishing family, all while working in Morgan City, Louisiana. He headed to his doctor, though, when he started having memory problems, never imagining a brain tumor would be his diagnosis. He goes, I really hate to tell you this, but he says, your tumor is the size of a softball. Mm -hmm. And he said, it's in the front of your head. I mean, I literally have no symptoms whatsoever other than a little bit of memory loss. And he was shocked. So then he turns around and tells me, you need to find and this is what scared me. He says, you need to find the best brain surgeon in the country. A daunting task, but Chris and his wife set out on a journey to find help. Some surgeons turned him down, admitting it was too complicated. Others said he was inoperable. But then he found what he calls his dream team at Houston Methodist Hospital. You know how they say if he doesn't give you a warm, fuzzy feeling mm -hmm. that you don't need to be there? Yes. Well, yes. He, he did. He just, I mean, the confidence, the information he gave me, it was just right on where we needed to be. Neurosurgeon Dr. David Baskin reassured him he was ready for the challenge to remove the atypical meningioma, but it would take three surgeons and their separate surgical teams to make it happen. And you can see he has this absolutely gigantic tumor. And it, what's unusual about this tumor is this is the part that's in the brain right here, okay? This part has grown into the skull. You can imagine the brain's supposed to be all the way here. It's it squished his brain way back this way. Now, why is this such a big deal? It's a big deal because it goes into a lot of different places. So taking out the tumor in the brain this big is a big deal because you have to remove the tumor without damaging the brain. But then the entire skull from here to here is destroyed, the tumor's in the scalp. And the biggest problem is it grows, it's grown down through into the nose. The tumor had also spread through Chris's eye sockets and into his sinus cavities. That means another specialist would need to help remove that portion of tumor. Ears, note, and throat specialist, Dr. Mas Takashima jumped on board and started putting plans in place. How do we avoid the optic nerves? How do we avoid the blood vessels? And so in the operating room, we have something called the surgical theater. And what that is, is it, it is a VR device with the patient's uh, information all incorporated in it. And so then we don these things on and we can sort of, you know, in three dimensions, sort of spin around and sort of see, oh, okay, you know, right there, right at this corner, this nerve is sort of involved. Dr. Takashima says they had to remove so much tissue, he got a rare viewpoint during the operation. I can see the neurosurgeon actually standing at the head of the bed through the nose, okay? So that, that gives you, you know, a, that, that enables you to conceptualize how big this tumor was. Now a third team comes in to complete the intricate procedure. Plastic surgeon Dr. Michael Klebeck explains why reconstructive surgery plays a critical role of taking out the tumor. When it's removed, it creates a situation that's not compatible with life. So you have the brain and the sac around the brain called the dura, and then it is in uh, communication with the nose and the mouth, which of course are full of bacteria. And so if you can't provide some um, healthy tissue, a layer to separate those two areas, the mouth and the nose from the brain, then over a period of about 48, 72 hours, the individual would develop meningitis and probably not survive. That's why Dr. Klebeck used part of Chris's leg to help with that repair. We borrowed a segment of muscle from his thigh along with a nutrient artery and vein that supplies circulation to that. Then they restored its circulation in his head. Dr. Klebeck says the success of that move is the difference between life or death. They successfully pulled it off. Around 50 people worked diligently in a well choreographed operation that took 18 hours to spare Chris's life. Chris has completed four surgeries at Houston Methodist and is now waiting on the tissue to heal. Right now, this spot in my head that you see that's sunken in, mm -hmm. there is no, there's no uh, skull cap there. This is, this, there's no bone. 
this is directly, you know, a piece of meat between me and my brain right here. So they want me to heal for at least another month and a half, two months, and then they're gonna go and put a titanium plate in my head. Then after that, you won't be able to physically tell what Chris has been through. His neurosurgeon wants this to be a story of hope for all. But you shouldn't give up because medicine is, ex is undergoing an explosion of knowledge, an explosion of technology, and chances are there's somebody or somebody, somebody somewhere who can actually take the do do what is said to be impossible it's really not impossible it just needs a lot of different uh, uh, sets of knowledge and lots of technology it worked for chris now he boldly wears this shirt from his grandkids announcing it was a tuma the key word was his dream team made it a thing of the past and now chris has a positive diagnosis After Chris's final procedure, he'll likely undergo radiation to zap any remaining tumor cells. But again, he's expected to live out a normal life after all of this. Congratulations to him and that team at Houston Methodist Hospital who was able to brilliantly pull this off.